hope you're all doing good so in this video let's review the following topics starting with our lion's king topic ramsey hunt syndrome so if you review literature given in schaefer's a special form of joster infection of geniculate ganglion with involvement of external ear and oral mucosa has been termed as Hunt's syndrome or James Ramsey Hunt syndrome. The clinical manifestations include facial paralysis as well as pain of external auditory meatus and pinna of the ear. In addition, vesicular eruptions occur in oral cavity and oropharynx with hoarseness, tinnitus, vertigo and occasional other disturbances right now let's move on to the next question Perkinger cells so that seems to be a question on the same so if you review literature Perkinger cells in fact there are several layers in gray matter the outer molecular or plexiform layer the intermediate Perkinger layer and the inner granular layer so as you can see in the image so there are flask shaped cells which are Purkinje cells. So the Purkinje layer is situated between the outer molecular layer and inner granular layer of gray matter. It's the thinnest layer having a single layer of flask shaped Purkinje cells. So these cells are the largest neurons in the body, right? Now let's move on to the next question, organophosphate poisoning. So how do you manage? So if you look into the literature, so atropine is usually given as an antidote. It's a specific antidote. And also we have cholinesterase reactivators such as oxines, right? And moving on to the next question, drugs in seizure management. So if you look into the table, we have various drugs, first choice drugs, second choice, and alternate drugs in various types of seizures. So in case of status epilepticus, it is diazepam, benzodiazepines, diazepam, intravenous. Right, so look into this table. So let me know what the question is in specific. Uh, if necessary, we'll update additional information in the description part of the video, right? Now let's move on to the next question. Site of IM injection. So just observe this image. I guess there was an image where they asked you uh, to identify the right site for IM injection, right? In case of intramuscular injections, the drug is injected in one of the large skeletal muscles that is deltoid, triceps, gluteus maximus, rectus femoris, etc. So muscle as you know is less richly supplied with sensory nerves and is more vascular so obviously absorption will be faster and also it's less painful but self-injection is often impractical because we need deep penetration. If you observe this image, to find the correct location for injecting into gluteus maximus muscle, expose the buttocks and divide in your mind each buttock into four parts. Aim the injection into the upper quarter of the buttock, that is which is marked with X in this particular diagram towards the hip bone portion. Right? Now, let's move on to the next question. Heparin antagonist, which we discussed in one of the revision classes uh, before the final exam. So as you know, heparin antagonist, it is protamin sulfate. So protamin sulfate is strongly basic, low molecular weight protein obtained from sperm of certain fish. Given IV, it neutralizes heparin weight for weight. That is, one milligram is needed for every 100 units of heparin. So it's used when heparin action needs to be terminated rapidly. Example, after a cardiac or vascular surgery and for heparin induced bleeding right now let's move on to the next question aterostatin so how do statins act so if you review literature aterostatin it's a synthetic stereoisomer of a penta substituted pyrrole which prevents the conversion of hmg coa by competitive and selective inhibition of hmg coa reductase right now let's move on to the next topic tetany so what leads to tetany we have hypocalcemic tetany latent tetany so i guess there was a question on hypocalcemic tetany so if you review literature Hypocalcemia tetany. Hypoparathyroidism leads to hypocalcemia by decreasing the resorption of calcium from bones. Hypocalcemia causes neuromuscular hyperexcitability, resulting in hypocalcemic tetany. Normally, tetany occurs when the plasma calcium level falls below 6 mg per deciliter from its normal value of 9.4 mg per deciliter. Right? Now moving on to the next question, maximum intercuspation. Usually in centric occlusion, we find maximum intercuspation. So if you observe the definition given in a Wheeler's, centric occlusion or intercuspal position is defined as maximum intercuspation of teeth, whereas centric relation is a position of mandible in which the condyles are in their uppermost position in mandibular fossa and related anteriorly to distal slope of articular eminence. 
Now moving on to the final question, Riloxifene. So what is this drug used for? It's a recently introduced selective estrogen receptor modulator. It's an estrogen partial agonist in bone and cardiovascular system, but an antagonist in endometrium and breast. Riloxifene prevents bone loss in postmenopausal women. Bone mineral density may even increase. It also reduces the risk of breast cancer. Riloxifene does not stimulate endometrial proliferation and is no increase in risk of endometrial carcinoma. Hot flushes like cramps are mild side effects. The only serious concern is threefold increase in risk of DVT, deep vein thrombosis, and pulmonary embolism. Riloxifene is an effective alternative to hormone replacement therapy for pre prevention and treatment of osteoporosis in postmenopausal women right so these are some of the points pertaining to this drug see if the question which is asked is matching with any of the following uh, topics if you need any additional information do let me know as i mentioned i'll update that according in the description part of the video right so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this video as i said just keep posting keywords we'll be creating questions and we'll be discussing and reviewing literature in the coming videos as well so i hope it's clear Wish you all the best. Love you all.